Uh, well, okay, thank you very much, of course, uh, for the invitation and to have the opportunity to take part in this uh, discussion and reflection about uh, what to do in Greece. Uh, I, I'm going to try to, to give some uh, inputs from uh, the French experience. Well, I think that France is quite well known for uh, a rather successful cooperative uh, movement. And uh, I would not say that we, we have uh, an absolutely uh, bad cooperative law. Uh, surely not. Uh, most of the principle that uh, Deolinda uh, described for Portuguese, Portuguese law uh, are present in French law. However, uh, the legal situation is very different. And um, uh, I think that uh, French cooperative law su suffer uh, from a, a double fragmentation. A double fragmentation, uh, first, because cooperative law is sometimes a little bit confused or uh, perverted by company law. It's not really companization, but uh, the distinction between these two uh, branches of law uh, is not clear. And the second uh, aspect of the fragmentation uh, is connected with uh, the, the problem of uh, the multiplication of special cooperative laws, special cooperative provisions. And so I'm, I must say that, uh, and I think that uh, actually uh, three of us uh, agree on that point, uh, I am strongly in favor of harmonization. However, however, and uh, I, I will explain why, of course. However, I'm, I think that uh, it, it's important to be pragmatic and not to uh, make uh, ideology. I mean, uh, we, we can be in favor or against harmonization, but as such, it's not very meaningful because, because it depends on the meaning that you put behind the word harmonization. Uh, Hagen clearly said that there are so many ways to harmonize and also so many degree of harmonization. So uh, I'm going to describe a little bit the, the French context uh, and, and um, explain a little bit more uh, what are the difficulties that are met uh, because of it. And uh, maybe it will give you some, uh, uh, some inputs uh, for your own reflection. The, the first point is that uh, the French uh, legal situation is mainly the consequence of history. Uh, the, the consequence of the way cooperative law has developed in, in France. Well, uh, cooperatives started their development in France in the 19th century. And at that time, there was uh, no legal form for cooperatives, of course. And uh, the only uh, available legal forms were uh, co companies, different kinds of companies. And uh, of people could uh, imagine and elaborate uh, original forms uh, different from companies, but which were not classified. And, and so uh, most cooperatives decided to be companies because they feel, felt they didn't have a choice. The question arose after 1901, uh, because at that time was adopted the um, law for associations. And uh, case law decided that uh, the cooperative was more an association than a company. But uh, that uh, statement, that decision, was um, first opposed to most uh, situations because I said cooperatives usually chose to be companies. 
And second, uh, that uh, case law was reversed uh, by the legislator who stated explicitly that cooperatives were companies. So um, that, that's the, 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 the birth of the difficulty between uh, cooperative law and company law. Concerning the question of uh, fragmentation into many special provisions, uh, it, come, it derives also from history. Uh, the first attempts, attempts sorry, uh, to elaborate a general cooperative law uh, was uh, in the end of the 19th century, uh, 80, 80s or 1890s. And uh, it was a failure. Uh, the, the legislator actually didn't pass uh, the, the, the legislation. And uh, the same um, failure occurred uh, just before the Second World War. Uh, and uh, here, the problem was not the legislator. It came uh, long before uh, because uh, the cooperative organizations didn't manage to elaborate a common uh, proposed legislation. So uh, the consequence has been uh, very simple. There has been uh, an increasing number of special laws because um, uh, when a new cooperative, uh, a new kind of cooperative uh, was evolving, was growing, it uh, appeared necessary to have provisions and special provisions were adopted. And uh, the second consequence has been that after the Second World War, uh, there was an opportunity because the, the prime minister was a cooperative activist. And so it was very in favor of cooperatives. So it has been uh, utilized to adopt a legislation. But at that time, and uh, uh, um, at that time, at least, and at last, uh, general cooperative legislation. But to be sure to succeed, uh, this legislation has been modest because there was a fear to fail again. So we've got in 1947, the general cooperative law, which is adopted. And uh, the, 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 the expectation is at least to have uh, this general cooperative law, uh, rather modest, but uh, which was planned to be completed with a reduction of special provisions. It is so true that uh, in that law of 1947, you've got a provision dealing with the adoption of a cooperative code. And you can find a, a similar provision again in another law in 1983. So the, the hope to have a cooperative code uh, remained a long time. But in practice, what happened was that uh, the special provisions evolved, uh, were uh, not removed, not at all, but uh, were amended, completed. And so uh, there has been a very, um, very important uh, special cooperative legislation besides the general cooperative law. And this remains exactly the same nowadays. So now uh, I, I'd like to say uh, just few, uh, the consequences of that situation. I think uh, there are two uh, major consequences, a legal consequence and uh, a more, uh, let's say, uh, institutional and symbolic uh, consequence. But uh, we will see that uh, these uh, institutional or symbolic consequences has got also legal effects. 
So first of all, the legal consequence, the legal problem, this legal problem derives more uh, from uh, the uh, confusion between uh, cooperative law and company law. The problem is um, exactly uh, as said uh, Hagen um, about the uh, assimilation by other branches of law uh, for cooperative law and company law. If you consider uh, consumer law, uh, competition law, labor law, tax law, it is sometimes difficult to uh, make clear that cooperatives are different from companies uh, because cooperatives is explicitly qualified as a company and submitted to the legal regime of companies uh, provided that it doesn't uh, violate, doesn't infringe uh, specific cooperative provisions. But uh, there are more clear difficulties and I will take only one example, very technical. The question of uh, the nullity, the voidness of decisions held by uh, organs of a cooperative. You know that for companies, there is a very strict regulation about voidness because uh, it is very uh, necessary to restrict uh, this voidness to protect uh, third parties, to ensure uh, uh, legal security, legal uh, certainty for third parties. So the rule is clearly that uh, can be void the decisions of uh, the organ of a company only if it violates uh, imperative provision of company law. And cooperative no law is not considered like part of company law. But there is no provision about voidness in cooperative law. So it is necessary to refer to the legal regime of nullity in company law. And so the decision held by a cooperative, by a, an organ of a cooperative, can be void only if it violates, if it infringes uh, a provision of company law and not of cooperative law, which is absolutely stupid. But so it is. That was just uh, one example. Um, uh, the other consequence uh, uh, of um, uh, this, the fragmentation is more institutional and uh, symbolic, uh, and it comes, of course, from uh, that the diversity of uh, uh, provisions and uh, special provisions for special kinds of cooperatives. It doesn't create so many difficulties uh, of articulation with general cooperative law. No, not, not so many. Uh, it, it creates difficulty with company law, but that's the same story that we have already uh, uh, considered. So I don't come back. Ne however, 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 a very strong difficulty, it is that each kind of cooperative, uh, which corresponds, which fits uh, with a special activity, agriculture, uh, consumer, uh, merchants, uh, workers, cooperatives, and, and, and so on. So each kind of cooperative feels very close to all the similar kinds of cooperatives, 
but does not feel so much close to other kinds of cooperatives. And this has very clear institutional consequences. If you look at farmers' cooperatives, which are very powerful in France, and you look at their federation, national federation, well, I don't know, I don't have the clear figure, but uh, they have uh, several, or, uh, I would say they have uh, probably uh, 20 or 30 employees for the federation. If you look at the general cooperative federation, you've got two employees and a half. And that's the same story for all the federations. And the consequence is that you don't have any strong discourse for all the cooperatives. And uh, of course, it uh, has the consequence uh, that the legal regime of cooperatives, the common legal regime, which is the basis for all the cooperatives, is rather fragile because it cannot rely on a strong discourse. Of course, uh, you understand that uh, all these reasons for me plead in favor of uh, harmonization. But it must be said, uh, I, I admit, that uh, some claims have been uh, made uh, to uh, highlight advantages of special laws. What would be uh, these advantages of special laws? Well, first of all, special laws would be more suitable to uh, each situation. And uh, the example uh, of uh, agricultural farmers cooperatives is uh, absolutely good. Uh, you've got a specific regulation for co uh, agricultural cooperatives and you've got very successful uh, agricultural cooperatives in France. Yes, that's true. That's true. But I've got two objections to this argument. First of all, it is not because you've got a strong common regulation that you prohibit Generous uh, um, special provisions. So, of course, there is no problem, and I have no objection for special provisions. But these special provisions must be limited to the necessity uh, fitting to a special situation. And second point, there is a price for this. And the price is the fragility of the spatial provisions and the general provisions. And uh, since a few years, there is a political uh, attack against co farmers' cooperatives, uh, notably because you've got a, a contest about the price and uh, uh, because uh, you've got the pressure of cooperators uh, against big cooperatives, uh, which are suspected uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to not to give the best price for them. And uh, the, the outcome is that um, political bodies uh, adopt for cooperatives similar solutions than they adopt for private companies to protect cooperators. And now, agricultural cooperatives understand that they must absolutely rely on the general cooperative law, which ensures specificities, which ensures that there is no confusion with company. And uh, uh, so uh, if you want to, to, to have a, a strong position, then you must absolutely uh, go altogether. It's quite uh, uh, 
you know that the, it, it is said that in the 19th century people decided to cooperate because they were weak and uh, it's only one one cooperative federation feels that it can be a little bit weak that itself uh, considers to cooperate with other federations of cooperatives and that's a little bit poor so uh, here it is and uh, I, I hope to have been clear enough and uh, to to have uh, uh, gives to have given some uh, some more uh, arguments in favor of harmonization uh, in, if, of cooperative law in Greece. Thank you.